This is the Trumpton Broadcasting Company, broadcasting live via the medium of modern technology. It's now time for your scheduled show with the Mayor of Trumpton, the Honourable Mike Dix. Hi, I'm Mike Dix. I'm here to help you today with your burning questions. And don't forget, we've got our regular features for the Trumpton area. There's Name That Chicken. Don't get too attached to the chicken, by the way. There's the pothole count with our pothole counting expert in the field. Aidan, over to you. How many potholes today? 42. Thank you, Aidan. And of course, we're going to be looking at the cost of living crisis with expert Brenda Honeyman, who has an interesting theory about why we should just ignore it and it will go away. Let's do the news. In the news today, boats. Small boats. It's really interesting, isn't it, that it's the boats that are the problem, not the people in the boats or how we might solve that problem. I thought we should call in live to the Home Office and speak to Suella Braverman and ask her directly, what's the problem with the boats? Suella. Hello. Welcome to the show. It's lovely to be here, Mike. I tell you, it's not very often I get a chance to truly express my inner feelings. Well, as you know, the Trumpton Broadcasting Company is here for you to speak to the hundreds, well, tens of people that live in Trumpton. So could you explain to us your latest immigration policy? Well, it's very simple. Basically, it's wrong. Immigration. Immigrate. Oh, it's, I thought you meant your policy for a moment. No, I think you'll find there's no problems with my policy. And if you say something like that again, I tell you, you better get used to saying goodbye to your knees. Right, right. Obviously, um, I don't. I'm quite fond of my knees. So, so let's let's look at how wonderful your current policy okay. is. Okay, here's the deal. They're coming over in boats. We simply ban boats. All boats. All boats. Okay. Start with the ferries. Don't trust them. Too big. Move too slowly. I mean, that seems like a reasonable approach. What about Navy boats? Well, we need the Navy boats to shoot the other boats. But if there's no boats, we won't need the Navy boats. Well, OK, I think you'll find, though, that we've got to be careful of other people coming along with other boats from other countries. So you're not banning all boats, just boats heading towards us? Yes. All boats, in that respect, all of our boats will actually be facing outwards. OK. Including the fishing boats? Absolutely. So they can't ever come back? Well, no, they can, but we'll attach tow ropes to them so we can pull them back in. I mean, that seems that seems quite... How do you... With the fishing boats, it's always interested me. How do you determine whether they're British fish that have been caught? It's very simple. They've got flags on a mic. Okay. And what you do is you get the fish and you say... Well, you ask it 27 questions about English heritage and see whether it can understand them or not. Which is why there's a shortage of fish in Trumptonshire at the moment. Well, yeah, it turns out fish aren't very good at actually answering questions on Coronation Street. <laughs> Which seems perfectly reasonable, I'm sure. So moving on to your other policies, you're also responsible for the Met Police. Yes, lovely bunch of lads. Yes, but there's been quite a few problems with them recently. And we've been experiencing them locally in Trumptonshire as well. PC McGarry came back from helping out at the Coronation and seems to be looking at Mrs Honeyman in a particularly funny way. I can't actually speak about PC McGarry, very simply put. Well, in relation to the Met, Trumpton is not in the London borough area. However, I think with questions like this, you need to refer to your own local constabulary, so it's probably best that you actually speak to PC McGarry about PC McGarry and make sure that PC McGarry actually does a full and comprehensive investigation about PC McGarry. We, we, we have tried to reach PC McGarry, but I'm afraid he he told me to piss off, and uh, and I just accepted that. That's fair enough. He he's is in fact a, he's a big fella. It's a local constabulary, and uh, having spoken to you for only a couple of minutes, I have to say I feel inclined to say the same thing, Mike. Well, so well, I, I think we've we've learnt two or three things: the fish can't do questionnaires, yes, um, and that uh, PC McGarry is probably a bit of a bully. I'm not going to comment on that. And that uh, you have a surprisingly different voice to the voice I expected. Why? Got a problem? No. Because I'd like for you to have a problem, Mike. No, no, it's fine. Because the thing is, Mike... No, look, thank you. Things seem okay, Mike. Let's shut it. Things seem okay, Mike. All right? All of a sudden, accidents happen. That's all I'm saying. That's a nice town hall we've got there. Well... Wouldn't want anything to happen. I'd hate for anything to happen. Suddenly, you know legislation, things happen, and all of a sudden, there's too many boats lying around. You've got to be careful of the boat. 
well, thank you. And we will do our best in Tramptonshire to look out for some boats and see if we can have them destroyed. Excellent. Thank you, Suella Braverman. My pleasure. Moving on now, we move to our chicken naming contest after the break. You're listening to TBC. We're here to talk royal matters now with Sir Clive Denby. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, my sir. sir. Clive, it's been a very royal week this week. Oh, I'm... it's been splendid, hasn't it? I have felt full, full, fully regal, I have to say. I, I found myself, I woke up this morning, um, I, I had a, a regal... Uh, well, I, I was so excited. Let me just put it this way. Thing, things were aroused. I was aroused in a regal way. And um, and it's all been lovely. And um, I think it's been a masterful, masterful display of of patriotism and the importance of the monarchy. And um, I think that uh, anything else and anyone else who disagrees... Uh, well, should be shot. Uh, I mean, that's radical. That's um... no, no. I don't. I think there's a legal precedent for it. I think if you look in the scrolls, you will see that it's perfectly justifiable to, um, well, basically pop someone off if they disagree with you about uh, about the royal family. What is it about the royal family you think is so important in the in the twenty first century? Well, I think it's a couple of things. Um, number one, they're all sexy as hell. Um, I don't know about the, the Duke you. of Gloucester. It... Oh. God, rabid boner every time I see him. Um, I don't know, just feel aroused constantly. But then um, again, you you have had a few incidents with horses recently in Trumpton. And well, I, I so believe, I, well, I, I think that's a little bit unfair to ask. I think that's unfair that um, I think under legal advice until that is a, what we call a case pending. Um, however, um, I feel that that was a slur. So I will not stand for such slurs. Um, Your connection to the royal family, yes. um, you actually have none? Is, is that, well, is, I, is I, that I, accurate? I, no, no. I believe that we all have a connection with the royal family. Um, I think you'll find if you if you look back uh, far enough in the course of time. I, I was actually um, preparing to be on the BBC TV show, Who Do You Think You Are? And uh, I phoned them up and I said, I'm perfectly aware of who I am. I'm Sir Clive Denby. And I think you'll find that uh, I do have a royal heritage. And, and how, did, how did that turn out? Well, it turns out that I'm I'm fifty seven percent Spanish, right? Um, thirty four percent Greek, interesting, and twenty four percent English, okay. which doesn't make a hundred percent. However, however, um, I'm sure it's completely accurate. You, you've got a little extra Spaniard in you. Well, there was that one time. <laughs> Another incident we can look at at a future date. So, um, the Trumpton um, Street Party for the coronation. Yes. Oh, what a magnificent day that was. Oh, i never seen the village looking so fantastic. Yes, what a marvellous effort made by everybody. The bunting was fabulous. The oh, The tables were fabulous, but nobody actually attended. Well, that was because of the scare. The scare. Yes. Yes. Word did get round that Meghan Markle was coming. Really? Yes. To Trumpton. To Trumpton. To a tea party in Trumpton. She well, she, she couldn't make an appearance anywhere else. They didn't want her anywhere else. Wasn't actually in the country. Was in Los Angeles at the time. Well, the rumours are a terrible thing. I mean, I can imagine how many people would be terrified of Meghan Markle appearing well, in Trumpton. She. Well, yes. I, I think you'll find that's absolutely correct and justifiable. Too. Justifiable, because as you say, and, 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 and your problem with Meghan Markle is... I, oh, I don't have a problem with Meghan. I, no, you, no. You're on record as saying that she's a divorcee and shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the royal family. There is that, obviously, yes. And, and how does that make you feel about the Queen? Well, she is blessed by God. There is a difference. Her divorce was blessed by God, I imagine. Well, well, she was blessed by God, and let's face it, she's been blessed with many things. Beauty, intelligence, more beauty, and good timing. She's got that going for her, which is lovely. But the people that didn't attend yes. uh, the Trumpton team were not really aware, as I'm told, of the Meghan Markle problem that you've now highlighted for right. us. Um, but, but many of them were turned back by PC McGarry. And, mm. um, do, 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 well, obviously, this is an ongoing investigation. Um, but apparently, I did have a chat with, with PC McGarry, and it turns out that um, he was using the new laws that have been passed um, about protesters. Right. And um, he felt that there were a lot of protesters coming. Worrying times in Trump. Worrying times. Um, as you know, M M PC McGarry is a stickler for doing things correctly. And it turns out that a lot of people had their union flags the wrong way round. Really? Yes. That's sacrilege. Yes. That's and, absolute um, sacrilege. I mean, almost Republicans. Well, I, I, I blame society. And uh, the problem was, is that, of course, as we all know, 
when the Union flag is upside down, that is a sign of uh, distress. So he quite naturally thought that these people were in distress and therefore arrested them for their own safety. Right. Um, the other people he could clearly tell were bad sorts, you know, like socialists. They were, they were probably thinking bad things about the royal family. Undoubtedly thinking bad things about the royal family, which is just not on. No. Not after all they do for us. And, and um, the fact that you appear on Boris Johnson's New Year's Honours list, is that...? Uh... Oh, that's just myself and Mr Johnson. Um, uh, we, we go back away. And um, and obviously I... Um... He's suggesting a peerage for you. Well, that's because of, of the work I've done for, for the parish of Trumpton. Um, yes. Not the donation that you gave to his personal fund for holidays? No, 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 no. I have not given any donation. And the holiday home that you have in Chigley that you've given to him free of charge for the last six years? Well, let's face it, it's in Chigley. Um, nobody wants, nobody to, go wants to, to go to Chigley. No, no. And frankly, frankly, he does a very good job cleaning it afterwards. I'm sure Carrie does. Um, it's been a pleasure to talk oh, to you. it's a delight to talk to you, Mr. Mr. Dix, absolutely and all the time. The next time we have a royal coronation, we will definitely have you back on the show. Oh, that'll be lovely. About five years' time, I'm told by oh, Doc. Super. Today's show was brought to you by Windy Miller's Organic Cider. Windy, why should we drink your cider? Well, it's brilliant. It's really good. It's organically grown. And very importantly, it gets you drunk. <laughs> oh, great times. Thanks for the money, Windy. And welcome back from the break. Um, and we're going to go back to the lines now for the rapid fire. What's happening in Trumpton? You've got one word to tell me. What's the problem in Trumpton or the country? Let's go to line two. Fish. Let's go to line three. Pomegranates. Line two again. Fish. It's still fish. And let's go to line six. We don't have six lines, so let's just go back to line one. It's the Prime Minister. And that was more than one word. I asked for only one word. We're going to stop that round now because I think you're taking the mickey by using two words. Unless you're hyphenating Prime Minister. In which case, let's go to line four. Should it be hyphenated? Yes. Thank you. Now a word from our sponsor. Today's show has been brought to you by Dr. Mott's Proper Mental Health Services. I know that it's troubling at the moment with the cost of living crisis, with the war in Ukraine, with Eurovision approaching rapidly, and I imagine you're struggling a little bit. If you are, turn to Dr. Mop. Over to Dr. Mop to tell us exactly how his new system works. Very simple, really. Um, buck up. Thank you, Dr. Mop. That'll be £15. And welcome back. We're going to go back to the phone lines and let's see who's on line two. Do we have two lines? We have two lines. That's amazing. Um, let's go to line two and see who's calling in. Hello, Mike. Nice to speak to you. It's, it's Frank here. Long time listener, first time caller. Hello, Frank. Well, don't be afraid. Don't be scared of me. Oh, I'm not scared of anybody. The only time I've ever been scared was in 1973 when I was in the jungles of Nicaragua. I was a freedom fighter fighting against the oppressive nature of the Nicaraguan government. I got in with a bunch of radical anarchists. It was an exciting time. I faced threats, danger all the time. We were actually quite successful. We overthrew the government, which was quite fine, but then we realised as radical anarchists we couldn't legitimately form a government. So we went back to the jungle. Anyway, that's another, that's what I wanted to talk about. Well, that tells me everything I need to know about why you're not scared about being a first-time caller on this show. So, Frank, why did you call in? Well, basically, I wanted to talk about a big threat that's happening on our streets that's relatively, it's, it's, it's not being dealt with, it's not being spoken about, and I think that it's an important thing that we need to be addressing and be open about it and honest and adult. Frank, this sounds important. Is it immigration? Is it crime? Is it police corruption? Is it government corruption? It's, it's worse than any of those. It, I, it's, it's basically young men wearing trousers, slip-on shoes and no socks. No socks. Exactly. What is coming today is society when young men are just walking around with ankles bared and it's just wrong. And, and what do you think is wrong with the bare ankles of young men? Why are you asking me this question, Mark? Surely you should be... It's just a British gentleman should always be wearing socks. Even with sandals? I'm shocked that you have to ask me this question. Is it socks with sandals? Or we could do this as a whole phone-in for the whole day. Socks yeah. with sandals or no sandals? Or no socks? OK, listen, I think you're mocking me now, so I'll just explain it to you so that you you know where we stand. Right. Frank, I wouldn't mock you. You're, a, you're my valuable listener. OK, right. So, if a gentleman is wearing sandals and the weather, the temperature is above 10 degrees centigrade, it is perfectly acceptable for a gentleman to wear sandals without socks. 
However, however, if the temperature is below 10 degrees centigrade, or if indeed the gentleman is wearing trousers, then that is definitely wrong. I see. However, when it comes to actually wearing a suit, suit trousers may be tapered at the bottom, depending on your tailoring delight. And slightly and higher up the calf. Slightly higher up the calf, and it's not wearing a sock along with a slip-on shoe, right? Which I've noticed a lot of the young people are doing these. Do you spend a lot of time in the Trumpton Square looking at young men? Frank? Frank? Have we lost Frank? Well, we appear to be having a technical issue there. And I'm sure that Frank will give us a call back and tell us exactly why he was looking at young men in Trumpton Town Square. And now this. You have been listening to the Trumpton Broadcasting Company, brought to you by your host, Mr. Michael Dix. That's me. And also accompanied by Mr. Aidan Goatley. That would be me. Thanks for listening. And uh, please give us your feedback. Unless it's negative feedback, because both of us have very, very weak egos, which means that we can't cope with trolling even if it's constructive criticism. Don't have nightmares. Sleep well. Goodbye.